Hello and welcome to The Matrixers with Jonathan and Shiva. For those who are new to our channel, we are Shiva and Jonathan. We are consciousness researchers, astral travelers, lucid dreams, and deal with all topics related to the matrix and how to leave it. And our master technique for this is spiritual dissociation. With this, you can achieve any insight, self-knowledge, astral travel, and so on. But of course, if you really do it intensively, you can also leave the matrix. Yes, and we will discuss this topic on the 7th. November, a short dissociation workshop. Practically a workshop. There is half an hour of introduction and theory, and then we practically do an hour of pure dissociation in a large... group over Zoom and be there too because the more there are, the more the energy accumulates and you come deeper into this state of consciousness, can experience their life and then save it for yourself so that you can always retrieve it for yourself at home. Yes, that's why we thought we would do this online workshop. You can then join via Zoom and take part in this hour and a half workshop. And we think it will be very good. Yes, you can find the workshop on matrixa.com. That's right, just click on it, register, and you're there. Yes, what is today about? Today it's about reincarnative archetypes. It sounds strange, but it is true. Yes, what can we imagine by that? Reincarnative archetypes are main roles that you can reflect in your life. Yes, then tell us something about the archetypes. The reincarnative archetypes. Exactly. Yes, it's like a computer game. You can also select certain roles. For example, if you're playing a science fiction game, you can maybe take over a celebrity and play with that celebrity. And that is also possible in our matrix here on the 3D level. And this circumstance makes it possible for Cleopatra and Napoleon to meet each other from time to time, in real life. As you may have already noticed, there are many people in psychiatric hospitals who say they are Napoleon, as an example. Or Cleopatra. And of course, there are also reports from psychologists and psychiatrists who have just described that there are people who really believe that they are Cleopatra or Napoleon, behave like that and sometimes even talk like that. And of course, they really want to play this role. And the point is, with reincarnative archetypes, which represent Cleopatra and Napoleon, for example, it is possible to tap into them. Some of you may also be familiar with the topic of channeling. With channeling, you connect with a specific person and then question them, so to speak. Here, William James is also a well-known philosopher. A philosopher who has since died, he was channeled by Jane Roberts. or Paul Cezanne, famous painter and artist, also contacted Jane Roberts, which I'm mentioning at this point because Jane Roberts was one of the most famous channel media of our time. And then she interviewed them and spoke to them, and then it just reflected the world view of these celebrities how they see the world now, what they think about the world, and so on. And of course, that is also possible with Napoleon and Cleopatra. 
You can also contact them and then interview them. But there is a problem. If you don't know that it's a channeling or don't know that you've just established contact with a reincarnative archetype, it can happen that you identify with this archetype. And then you really believe in your podium. So you mean that you don't even notice that you're channeling? but rather the channel comes through and then you feel like Cleopatra. Correct, that's what I mean. And that's why in psychiatry there are thousands of people in the world who believe, for example, that they are Napoleon or Cleopatra. And who really believe they are that person at present. Some of them even believe that they were still alive at that time. And then you look at a cell phone and say, what kind of thing is that? Because in Napoleon and Cleopatra's time, there were no cell phones or televisions or cars or anything like that. This can happen, but in most cases, it is the case that the person who believes he is Napoleon or Cleopatra or Jesus or someone else actually knows everything in the present. knows cars, cell phones, screens, technology in general. So he knows everything. And here we see that the two personalities somehow mix here. Otherwise the person would not know what is currently technically possible. And as I said, in psychology it's called psychosis when you believe you're someone else or even a celebrity. And we wouldn't call this psychosis, no, we would just call it subconscious channeling, you could say. And that is possible for everyone. Each of us is able to telepathically tap into a recreational archetype and make contact with it. So you can get in touch with Napoleon and then ask Napoleon what it was like back then. And he tells you that too. Or Cleopatra, you can also tap. Or other celebrities, Einstein, you can also tap into. Or what other celebrities do we have? Nikola Tesla, for example, would also be exciting. Yes, Nikola Tesla would certainly be exciting too. Uh, because I think Albert Einstein was once asked by a reporter, how do you feel as the most intelligent person in the world? And then Einstein replied, please go to Mr. Tesla. He can answer that for you. These are reincarnative archetypes, so they are main roles that you can also choose during your usual incarnation. It is also possible in a second way if you decide to incarnate again on earth in your next life. You can. So to speak, dock your consciousness to one of these archetypes. That means you then live Napoleon's life as an observer. Exactly, I would say that too. We have an infinite number of selves, realities, and you can join in anywhere. So it's a, yes, Napoleon, Cleopatra, and whatever they're called are kind of like public places for incarnations. This means that you are not Napoleon, but you just join Napoleon with your consciousness and can then observe his life. Play along. Play along exactly or replay it. For example, you can also say Jonathan and Shiva, they definitely have a great life. In my next life, I would like to play mouse with Shiva and Jonathan. And then you can dock with us in the next life. In Frank and Canyon, please. Can you join us and then live our lives as an observer? But it seems to you that because you are the observer of Shiva and Jonathan, you believe that you are us. 
In reality, you are only docked with your consciousness. This phenomenon can also be found in dreams. Yes, of course. Each night, each night. In dreams, we dock our consciousness to an alternative version of ourselves. And what do we believe when we do that? That we are the alternative self because we perceive from its perspective. That means you might live in Berlin, even though you actually live in Frankfurt. In the dream, you live in Berlin, have different friends, have a different apartment. And you are fully convinced that you live in Berlin. Yes, during the dream, as long as the dream lasts. And this is the same phenomenon that we encounter in our dreams. That's why it's actually inappropriate to say that it's a psychosis, because we all do it every night. We dock ourselves with our consciousness to another personality. And the result is that we over-identify with this personality in our dreams. And through this over-identification, we then believe that we are. And that's the same thing that happens to people who say they are Cleopatra or Anapolia. Or a reincarnation of it. Yes, there is another interesting theory or possibility as to how one can create a self or how one can believe that one is one of these archetypes. We live in such a spiritual community here in El Paraiso Verde in Paraguay and Silvia and Erwin, the two founders, are also very spiritual and every now and then we sit down with them and chat about very exciting spiritual topics. And so we would now like to introduce you to Erwin's theory on this, which is also very interesting. Erwin has been doing reincarnation regressions for years, so that means he did regressions into their past lives with hundreds or thousands of people. This is called regression therapy. And he had, what did he mean, a very large percentage of people who said they were Jesus, they were Napoleon, they were Cleopatra. So they had an incarnation or were convinced that they were one of these archetypes in their past life. Now how do you come up with the idea that this could have been them? Erwin says that these people were not really Napoleon, not really Cleopatra or Jesus, but that they were participants in the life of Jesus, Cleopatra or Napoleon. In other words, they were followers of Jesus, for example, or fought with Napoleon on the battlefield, or were servants of Cleopatra? In any case, they were part of this personality's life and took the morphogenetic information of this archetype with them, brought it over and now talk about how they were Cleopatra or Napoleon. That's Erwin's view theory. I don't think it's bad either. There's something to it. It's also possible, of course, just as possible as connecting with these archetypes with your consciousness. Therefore, there are several ways to have been Napoleon or to believe that he was. Yes, I still remember a dream I had very well. My dream teacher took me to the time of Jesus. And there she said to me, come with me here, I had to show something, and then I went with her. We changed time tracks and traveled back in time to a different reality. And then suddenly I was standing in a square like this, and there were a lot of people shadowing each other in a circle on the market square. And then I went through it, rummaged through it a bit and thought what was going on there. And there was a man lying on the ground. And I thought, oh, maybe he's dead or unconscious or something. And then I heard something about he dropped dead. And so I heard something like that. And then I saw a man who I then identified as Jesus. And then he squatted down next to the man. And I just thought, oh, that's that charlatan that everyone is talking about. So I wasn't a believer in Jesus at all in this episode of my past. And then I thought, yeah, now he's doing some tricks or something. 
and then he put his hand like this over the person on the ground and created a brownish amber, I would say, ball. About that big, about 30, 40 centimeters in diameter. He created it out of nothing and then placed it over the dead man who was lying on the ground and then he got up again afterwards. And I stood there and thought, that doesn't exist. And of course I was in a conflict at that moment. Charlatan or were all these stories about Jesus true or something? So I'm giving the example now because if I hadn't noticed that my dream teacher had taken me with her to this time, if I had only noticed the... Seen from the beginning of me standing there in the crowd and watching Jesus, I would have, I can also believe that I am watching myself healing someone. And then the over identification would have occurred at that moment. So you're referring to Erwin's assumption? Correct. So what Shiva just said, that Erwin has already spoken to hundreds or thousands of people. I don't know. He has a lot of them. He's been practicing this for a very long time, for many years. And that's why we found the topic interesting to talk about speak. And that also supports Erwin's theory. Yes, absolutely. That in a dream you didn't notice certain situations, certain agreements and only remembered a single scene and then over-identified with... ...it. And of course, if you over-identify with a historical personality, i.e. with a reincarnative archetype, then it can of course happen that you also think of yourself as that person. Exactly. And that's what's so exciting about it, because channeling is a skill that anyone can learn. Anyone can just try to establish contact with an archetype and then receive information from it, like Joan Roberts with Paul Cezanne and William James and so on. So very interesting, absolutely. It's an interesting ability, you just have to be careful that you don't over-identify yourself. Otherwise, a great skill. This way you can get information about what things really were like in the past. Was Jesus really crucified? Was Napoleon really as ruthless as was said? Or Genghis Khan? Why did he suddenly die? Everyone says he fell off his horse. If that's true, and all the things that interest you so much about the history of our time, you can really get the information in this direction as it was back then. And not the way it was explained to you in history class or during your studies. Yes, dear ones, that was our short, exciting video about archetypes. Have you ever been Jesus or Napoleon? Write it to us in the comments and we'll see each other again in the next video next Sunday. And we look... Forward to seeing you. Yes, lots of love. Bye. See you soon. You can also activate a subscription for it.